to me, nothing embodies ancient Kyoto better than its geisha. They are the keepers of tradition, a living, breathing link to the old ways. And at Kyoto's movie studio, tourists pay top dollar to get made up like a geisha for an afternoon. This may look uncomfortable, but it could be worse. The geisha used to whiten their skin with nightingale droppings and a powder called oshiroi, which gave them lead poisoning. They're still not supposed to smile because their teeth look yellow next to all that white skin. Geisha, they tell me, were once on the cutting edge of style, the social trendsetters of Japan. Then they gradually realized that they were losing out to Western fads and fashions and decided to reinvent themselves as the keepers of the ancient ways. The geisha community is the only place where women are not the weaker sex. Why? Because deep down, geisha do not need men. They're not waitresses and they're definitely not prostitutes. They are a form of social oil whose job it is to ensure that relationships among their clients are smooth and conflict-free. But for a lot of Japanese I talk to, geisha are neither good nor bad. They're just irrelevant. That's got to feel good. But for these women, it was just a passing fancy. To be a real geisha takes a lifelong commitment to training and discipline. And as it turns out, the truth about the mysterious willow world is not at all what I expect. Kobai san is 63. She has no children and has been a geisha since the age of 21. She lives in a resort town just outside of Kobe. Aside from Kyoto, where they're supported by a government subsidy, the geisha are having a hard time making ends meet. Kobai-san became a geisha because she loved to sing and dance ever since the age of four. She tells me that she's not beautiful, but that just makes her practice harder on her shamisen. Geisha normally don't marry, which really sets them apart. Despite this fact, or perhaps because of it, geisha are symbols of Japanese femininity. Kobai-san is proud of her job and recommends it to young women who are choosing a career. There's plenty of free time, she tells me, and she gets to meet high-ranking people from all over the country. But it's a lonely life. I don't see a single photo of her family in her home, just shots of her career. And her place is tiny. When it's time to prepare for work, she has to go elsewhere to get dressed. She insists that being a geisha is just a job like any other, but I think she's wrong when Kobai-san steps out of her sensible shoes, she is transformed into something larger than life, a keeper of tradition. That's quite a legacy.